Hello everyone, my name is Guillaume Simoneau. I'm recording this from Montreal, uh, the province of Quebec in Canada. And I will be talking to you today about uh, a book I published with, uh, with Mac last summer entitled uh, Murder. Well, in general, this book is a response. It's, um, it's me responding, dialoguing with, uh, with my mom. Uh, so it's basically me responding uh, to her through to her work that she did around the spring of uh, 1982 um, on the south shore of Quebec City. Again, we we grew up uh, we grew up on a farm. Uh, she was uh, doing kind of a amateur photography, but she she had a passion. She has a ho- she had a hobby for photography. Uh, and and she produced an amazing series of uh, of portraits of us as kids, um, uh, tending, taking care uh, of uh, four baby corvids, four baby crows, uh, that we that we kind of um, uh, rescued in the woods after my my dad. Uh, accidentally knocked down a tree that was uh that had a nest full of baby crows in and uh so we inherited these four baby crows so we brought them back home and and we raised them and at that moment my mom had a yashika japanese camera and she took uh beautiful portraits of us as kids all the photos from the corvids maybe like uh, 50 photos they live together in a smaller album and it was really really gorgeous and I knew I knew I wanted to do something special and when I came uh, across the work of Masai Safukase it was like an epiphany I was like okay that's it this is the layer that was missing uh, I'm going to not only respond uh, uh, to my mom's photograph through my practice and my own photography but I'm going to go do it in Japan uh, in the footsteps of Fukase, uh, paying homage to to ravens, to his body of to his his uh, body of works, also about corvids, uh, which was also published by Mac, I think, in two thousand eighteen or nineteen, and um, I'm gonna uh, do it in Japan, but under the the same thematic of of crows uh, and ravens. So I set off uh, to Japan uh, um, to to produce this body of work, mostly in 2016 and 2017. Uh, I shot a whole lot in Saga, uh, kind of a seismic prefecture uh, and the, the mountainous region of uh, Kanasawa. And uh, so that's it. That's how that's how uh, murder murder came to be. It kind of um, an homage attack to Masai Safukase and uh, kind of a, a timeless dialogue with uh, my mother's photographs. Voila.
yeah that's it uh, that's it uh, for for myself for my for my background i won't i won't go too much uh, into that i think talking about the body of work is more interesting so i'm going to follow uh, a few a few questions that uh, that live uh, at mac uh, sent me and um and go through them one by one and and do my best to uh, to pull this 15, 15, 20 minutes recording without <laughs> messing it up and having to start again from the beginning. So uh, after the background, uh, the second question is, can you tell us about this book? Um, yes, absolutely. So uh, so this book, where to start? Um, well, in general, this book uh, is, 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 is a response. It's um, is me responding dialoguing with uh with my mom with my dear 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 mother Jeanne d'Arc Fournier uh who is still alive today who I adore who is uh, still on the south shore of Quebec City uh so it's basically me responding uh to her through to her work that she did around the spring of uh 1982 um, on the south shore of Quebec City, again, we, we grew up, uh, we grew up on a farm. And so basically, uh, she was, uh, doing kind of a amateur photography, but she's, she had a passion. She has a, ho- she had a hobby for photography, uh, and, and she produced an amazing series of, uh, of portraits of us as kids, um, uh, tending, taking care uh, of uh, four baby corvids, four baby crows uh, that we that we kind of um, uh, rescued in the woods after my my dad uh, accidentally knocked well, well accidentally knocked down a tree that was uh, uh, hosting that was the the the. the um, that had a nest full of baby crows in. So basically my dad, uh, we needed uh, a tree, we needed some wood to build a, a bridge close to, uh, close to the farm. And so we went to the forest. I remember that day, that day clearly, uh, we went to the forest. I was very young, I was like four years old, but I remember going to the forest. And, and mostly what I remember was the, the, the crawling, the crawling, I don't know how to say it in English, but the, 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 the screaming, quote unquote, of the, the baby corvids when they hit, uh, when the nest hit the ground. Because my dad knocked down the tree, not knowing the tree, the, the nest was in there, obviously. And, uh, and I remember the, the screaming of the baby crows. So anyway, we waited for, for the parents to show up and they never showed up, obviously, uh, being scared of us uh, with the chainsaw and everything or the axe, I'm not sure, but of human presence. And uh, so we inherited these four baby crows. So we brought them back home and, and we raised them. And at that moment, my mom had a Yashika Japanese camera coincidentally a Japanese camera uh, and she took uh, beautiful portraits of us as kids uh, taking care of the crows and interacting and talking to the crows and doing all what kids do but with crows like it is a beautiful uh, moment in our in our childhood so um so that's the that's the the background of uh, that's how this this kind of the kind of the 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 the, uh, the 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 beginning the the I'm looking for the word but anyways it's kind of the yeah the beginning of how how this this book came to be so fast forward uh several several years tons of years uh I'm presenting another body of work I'm in Chicago grown up I have my career and everything I'm in Chicago presenting another body of work called Love and War at uh, the Museum of Contemporary Photography in Chicago. And uh, I pay a visit to Lisa Sutliff at uh, the Milwaukee uh, Art Museum, not far from there. I was uh, showing her the first installment of my the next body of work that I was coming up with called Experimental Lake, which I also published with uh, Mac in 2018. And and while I, when I was leave, leaving, uh, Lisa made sure uh, to tell me to go visit the Shomei Tomatsu exhibition at the Art Institute of Chicago. 
uh, the, it was in 2013. And so I did so uh, in the, the days after, uh, after our visit. And, and it just floored me. I was, I was, it, it became rapidly uh, obvious that I was uh, uninformed and needed quite a bit of education on Japanese photography. And, and being in the, in the physical presence of an original um, 1102 Nagasaki by Shometo Matsu, just, it, it just saw my legs, like it left me speechless. I was on my knees. So in the following days, uh, I, I dove, dive, dive in the past, uh, deep into, um, into studying Japanese photography and wanting to know everything about it because I was so amazed by what I saw. So quickly, um, the work of uh, Masai Safukase uh, stood out. And uh, I, a little parenthesis here, when I was studying photography um, in, in Montreal in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, I had noticed my, the, the photographs that my mom made um, in, uh, while I was growing up of those four COVIDs and, and us, the kids and, and, and the kids. So the beautiful photographs. And I knew that I always wanted to show these photographs outside my family albums. And my mom always kept them in this, this little, this little album, uh, separate from the, the main photographs at home. All the photos from the COVIDs, maybe like, uh, 50 photos, they live together in a smaller album and it was really, really gorgeous. And I knew as a student, I was like, one day I, I need to do something with these photographs. But I also knew that I didn't want to just show the work uh, to uh, an outside audience and be like, voila, this is the work of my mom, hi and bye, you know. I, I wanted to um, to do something more special with it, to add layers and to, to respond to her work in a, in a more personal way. So I waited, I waited. This, this, this body of work took me, took me forever to, to come up with. Like, I basically like, started thinking about this body of work in 98. So it took, it took forever. I published in, in, 2008, in, in 2018, so if you, if you think about it. So some projects take forever to come to, uh, to fruition. Anyway, so I knew I wanted to do something special. And when I came uh, across the work of Masai Safukase, it was like an epiphany. I was like, okay, that's it. This is the layer that was missing. Uh, I'm going to not only respond uh, uh, to my mom's photograph through my practice and my own photography, but I'm going to go do it in Japan uh, in the footsteps of Fukase. Uh, paying homage to to ravens to his body of to his his uh, body of works also about corvids, uh, which was also published by Mac I think in two thousand eighteen or nineteen, and um, I'm gonna uh, do it in Japan but under the the same thematic of of crows uh, and ravens. So I set off uh, to Japan uh, um, to, to produce this body of work, mostly in 2016 and 2017. Uh, I shot a whole lot in Saga, uh, kind of a seismic prefecture uh, and the, the mountainous region of uh, Kanasawa. And uh, so that's it. That's how that's how uh, murder murder came to be. It's a it's a mix of my mother's images and new images, newer images. I did uh, new images. I did in two thousand sixteen and two thousand seventeen, kind of um, an homage attack to Masai Safukase and uh, kind of a how could I say a timeless dialogue with uh, my mother's photographs. Voila. Uh, okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. How does this book relate to the rest of your work? Well, I th that's a tough question. Is it a tough question? Well, I think that the simple fact that, that I follow my intuition and my instinct uh, to move forward um, with my practice, I think all of this binds the different bodies of work I have produced together. Uh, just like the fact that I 
go towards or forward i i go towards my my just my interest my principle my values um my obsessions my concerns all of this all of these things uh guide my production so after a while uh you see uh, I think you see obvious patterns and parallels and correlation emerge from all of that. It's kind of a web that uh, that creates uh, your quote unquote style or the the the, the aesthetic that you um, uh, that you that you produce. So um, I think the sole factor relating uh, all these bodies of work uh, uh, together or the the collection. Uh, of works together uh, is the author is the fact that that I produce them it's nothing else than that my next series will be completely different from what I've done in the past but if you know uh, the work I've done in the past you will be able to tell that this new series is mine just because you see parallels and you see recurrent themes uh, go like if you see if you look at my past four bodies of work you'll see that there's insects in all of them it's just because I have a fascination with entomology so it's it's all these things that go through my work and um, that form um, the, the the kind of relations uh, between the bodies of work I think uh, voila uh, next question who or what uh, were your key influences while making this project Hmm. I think they're more spiritual influences uh, rather than stylistic or trying to emulate or inspire, quote unquote, like we hear a lot uh, these days. I think I would say in terms of they're most, man, they're mostly, yeah, they're mostly, no, not all Japanese, but Kikuji Kawada, also published by my Kikuji Kawada is an all time, all time master and and i'm in awe of his work uh lie koshiga as well uh much more uh, contemporary uh modern current figure uh lie koshiga's work is is truly breathtaking uh iranian filmmaker abbas uh Kiarostami, i think is is a master of whatever uh, he touched, he passed away not so long ago, a few years ago. Uh, I cannot get enough of all his movies and his photography as well. And I would say last, maybe Chris Marker, same thing, just like master overall of whatever he touches in different mediums and truly inspiring figure. Um, that's it for the influences. Uh, next question, can you talk us through three or... Uh, three of your favorite images in the book. Why do you like them? Is there any background information we should know about them? Sure. Uh, the first one I would say is a photograph uh, entitled Remains. Uh, and it's early in the book on the second page. Um, it's basically, I love in this photograph, uh, the dichotomy of the, the sublime and the horrible and the kind of classical feeling to it in terms of the beautiful warm lighting caressing a scene yet it is an absolutely gory scene uh i really like those this these tensions in the same photographs it's it's really like if one thing that i would self uh declare as something identifying of my photography is that is trying to capture those images where the tension where tensions occur between two, two principles or two concepts or two, uh, two polarities pulling in each direction, opposite direction. There's something I, really, I find really powerful and unsettling about it. Um, I really like that. A second photograph and probably the most important photograph of, of, of this, this body of work, uh, not so... Uh, not for the reason that it's central uh, to the body of work, but because it's the genesis. Oh, genesis is the word I was looking for earlier. The genesis is my mom's photograph, but especially this photograph of me with not looking at the camera, looking away, kind of like, kind of like 
nervous and excited about having three crows on my shoulders, on my head. And it's this mini me uh, holding those three crows uh, that, that sparked and that proposed this, uh, the creation of this body of work 30 years later, 35 years later. Uh, my mom was making this photograph at the same time that Fukase was making ravens back in Japan. And it's this photograph that I wanted to, to show to the world uh, through one way or another. And it's this, this uh, yeah, it's this, this photograph is extreme. And not because of me, uh, definitely. I think all of my mom's photographs are equally important. But in this series, I think this one, just because I don't look at the camera and I have three crows on myself and the composition in the moment with the little hands in the air is just quite beautiful. And, and my mom really had an eye for photography. It's, uh, it's, it's obvious in, in this photograph. So this is, this is the second one. The third one, I would say, uh, is an insect photograph, is the two uh, photographs of spiders. Uh, they, are, they are called St. Andrew's Cross Spider. Uh, zero one and zero two. It's basically front and back, uh, and having had a and, and still have a passion for entomology, uh, seeing those those uh, spiders. Although they're not insects, but in the close close cousins, uh, for real in Japan was it was a true pleasure for me, uh, especially given just the particularity of 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 their the, the web construction and the different theories that, that arise uh, from scientists, entomologists, that they don't really know why she's, she sews or she, she puts together an X on her web if it's to prevent uh, uh, kind of anybody to anybody or <laughs> anything, anybody, insects, birds, whatever, to go through the web or to attract them or to, to hide herself. She, she puts her legs together to match the X. So there's a lot of theories, but they don't know for sure what's up with the spider. And it is, it's just, it was, yeah, I was, I was so happy to see, um, to see this. Um, yeah, I could go on and on about telling you stories about insects and entomology, but I'm already over my time. I'm already at 19 minutes and I'm supposed to stop at 20. So I'll, I'll just go to the next question. Is there a particular image that you feel is central to the project? Definitely one is called Horus. Uh, it's uh, the photo of a falcon. The central photo of uh, of the falcon preying uh, on the ravens. Uh, I like the mythological charge of this image. I like the the two iconographic figures fighting for their life. Uh, the darkness of and, and the light, the oppressor, the victim. I don't know. I feel I feel it's a very layered and charged uh, photograph, and and especially that. All of this, uh, again, once again, is sugar-coated in a, in a warm sat sunset uh, uh, lighting. Uh, makes, it, makes it even more uh, interesting to me. Uh, next question. Can you tell us a little about the sequence of the book? Uh, that's going to be a tough one. Because uh, it's one of the most important thing for me uh, is the sequencing of a book. Uh, it's very, very visceral. Uh, I know if it's right or wrong, if the balance is achieved or not, uh, if it's elevating uh, the, 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 the power of the single image, uh, of the strength of a single image to, to something else by combining it with other ones. If it's not, I know right away. Um, honestly, I think I would be the worst person to work with in an editing room because I would not be able to explain why things are working or not. I just know it. It's, it's again, I'm repeating myself, it's extremely visceral, extremely personal, um, but it's in my guts and I make a million changes uh, before, before the, the ultimate one, before the final one. And I make changes until I know, until I feel it's perfect in my guts. I let it sit. I come back to it. It's, it's, it's intense. <laughs> it's very intense. Uh, what is the most important thing for your creative process? Oh God, curiosity. Definitely. Uh, what's over there? Uh, how things are made? How does this work? Uh, why is this person so into something? 
Why is everybody heading in this direction? Why is this person angry? Uh, why, why everything? I want to know and see everything on every field, in every circumstances, at every moment. I am curious and that's what led me to, to find things that I'm not supposed to uh, and led me onto journeys to different bodies of work. And yeah, yeah, definitely. And people start telling you stories. No, it's amazing. Curiosity is where this main thing. Last question. Um, what advice would you give uh, anyone looking to become a photographer and or artist? Wow. One advice. Be fearless. Um, yeah. Be proactive and move forward and do you. Do you, like take whatever is weird in you and and pull it out and work with it don't shy away from it embrace it uh, all your particularities is what's going to make your your work personal and echo with others uh, be proactive stay engaged uh, creative uh, uh, and productive reach out to people and connect to people who inspire you and because they're gonna you're building an army when when you're an artist because because you're alone like you don't have an employer this is a career it's not a job so you need to build an army uh of of you need to build a network and it's easier than ever uh to do so so don't be shy reach out voila uh i think that's it for me i hope you <laughs> you enjoyed my ramblings and stay safe and talk to you soon bye bye